Hi, I'm sorry that you couldn't make today's session. And um, today we're going to go through learning outcome two. Uh, the aim is to understand the ways in which health and safety requirements impact on customers and the work of practitioners in health and social care workplace. Criteria 2.1 states, analyze how information from risk assessment informs care planning for individuals and organizational decision-making about policies and procedures. So, in this section, you need to write about how a risk assessment creates guidelines and protocols. It's to determine what policies and procedures need to be upheld in practice. I'm going to give you an example. Um, if you were looking after a looked after child, a looked after child is somebody that's been removed from care and now they're in care of health and social care um, support workers and practitioners under the Children Act 1989 or the Children Act 2004. You would ca carry out a risk assessment if a child had a mental health issue. Therefore, if a child was at risk of self-harm, the risk assessment would show the child is at high risk. The risk assessment may be colour-coded um, with a key chart so that it's visually easy for staff to see. And then you can have like a traffic light system or a seizure is within practice to show um, that it's easy to the eye that this child is at high risk. Um, it promotes good practice. In addition to this, the risk assessment should inform the procedures that staff are to follow, such as making their home safe. So if it's identified in your risk assessment that a child is at high risk of, of harming, you need to follow, follow procedures to put in place to stop that risk or minimise the risk from happening, therefore removing sharp objects keeping sharp objects such as knives in um, locked drawers. Um, another scenario at a nursing home, if you work within a nursing home, I know there's going to be different practitioners working in different health and social care settings. Therefore, whatever your risk assessment is, you speak about it and link it to the care planning because obviously your patients and clients or your service users, whichever you refer them to, will all have care plans determined by the risk assessment needs. Hello, somebody joined on. Sorry, if you've just joined on, we're on um, 2.1. Um, and we're talking about um, the risk assessment. Um, I'll carry on speaking. Please feel free to talk if you can uh, hear me and I can hear you. Um, but this will all be uploaded onto Moodle. I was going on to a risk assessment in a nursing home. If you identify a risk, maybe perhaps the patient has bed sores, you have a duty of care to move the patient. You have a duty of care for the service user as well as practice. Um, so if that is in your risk assessment and it's, the protocol has not been um, followed, you could be accountable for um, the service users. Sorry, Cynthia. Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Sadia. Hi, Sadia. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I just had a, um, some trouble logging in. Ah, oh, right. No late. worries. Well, um, I've just started going through it, but I'll start from the beginning because it appears that you're the only one online, to be honest. So I did start the recording, <laughs> but obviously nobody was there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'll start from the beginning. Okay, thank um, you. That would be great. Yeah, just feel free if you've got any questions as I'm going through. That's fine. I can't see your screen because I'm I'm having to do it through my phone. So, oh yeah, um, I'm doing it through my phone too. One second, I'll see if um, it'll let me show you. Can you see anything my... now? Oh, I can. Yeah, I can now. 
Right, okay. Well, this is a learning outcome two. You d okay. Did you not do learning? Was you not on for the first one? No, I'd missed the first one, unfortunately. Um, oh, but I did imagine. receive your recording from Ramanjeet. <clears throat> Ah, right. Yeah, that's good, because that was all the first learning outcome. So, yes, yeah, today we're going to go through learning outcome two. Okay. Um, the aim on there is to understand the ways in which health and safety requirements impact on customers and the workplace of practitioners in health and social care workplace. And the first criteria, I'll just move the phone up. Can you see it? Um, 2.1. Yep, I can see it. Yeah, it's um, to analyse how different how different information from risk assessments informed care planning for individuals and organisational decision making about policies and procedures. So, in this section, you need to write about how risk assessments creates guidelines and protocols. It determines what policies and procedures need to be upheld in practice. Well, I'll give you an example. It's for looked after children. For example, if you were looking after a looked after child under the Children Act 1989 or 2004, uh, do you know what a looked after child is? Uh, no, I don't know. Oh, right. It's basically somebody that's been taken off the parents um, mm -hmm. or maybe abuse or neglect or safeguarding concerns and they've put, been put in care of the local authority. So it's um, basically showing you how a risk assessment can be identified in relation to the needs of the child. Okay. Okay. Um, so you would carry out a risk, uh, a risk assessment if a child had mental health issues. Therefore, if a child was at health, a high risk of self-harm, the risk assessment would show that the child is at risk. The risk assessment may be colour-coded with a key chart. Do you have risk assessments in your place of work? Um, I'm not currently working at the moment, but I have. I am aware of what risk assessments are because I've done early years. I'm studying. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 It'll be so, the same um, in early years, but obviously yeah. the risks will be different um, because they'll have different needs. And um, looked looked after children can be from four to twenty four if the statement said. But um, I'm talking about eleven to eighteen year olds in a looked after children so so it's basically a risk assessment and it may be colour coded as a key chart um, so that the staff can visually see like if it's red that it's a high risk or if it's uh, amber then it might be a middle middle risk and then if it's low it might be green. Um, it promotes good practice. In addition to this, the risk assessment should inform procedures for the staff to follow, such as making the home safe. So if the risk assessment identified a need that um, a young person was going to self-harm, then it's up to the practice to keep everything safe. So if it was with knives or sharp objects, it's up to the practice to lock these things away. So within different health and social care settings the needs will be different depending on what sort of service users they have okay. so on this um 2.1 criteria you've got to just um, analyze and um, the risk assessment and how the risk assessments will inform creating a care plan for um the health and social care setting and then if you go on to um just a bit further down, it's still 1.1. I've just put in there the um, concepts of a risk, requirement for a risk, identify potential hazard. And um, if you listen to the um, last section, it was like um, infection, like if you was in a hospital, it'll be um, controlling of infection. Fire is um, trips and falls are normally in all work practices. There was always like an accident book, or if anything was to happen, there's always somewhere that should be reported and recorded. A uh, food risk, so that would link to like um, food hygiene standards. Implement and monitor controls. That's making the paper trail of the risk that has happened. So it. Um, quality assurance to know that you've done actually something about it. The same with um, recording a uh, record of risk assessment so that you've actually um, actively done something about it and also review and update. So review the 
um, reviewing the risk assessment is important as needs change. For example, if a service user is no longer at high risk of self-harming, then you would change the risk assessment. It shows that you have reviewed the service user's needs and you have followed up the risk. There's no point in doing a risk assessment and just leaving it there because needs change. So it will need updating, it will need reviewing because that ensures um, best practice as well. You have to adhere to best practice as a practitioner. On the other hand, it may be identified that the risk is still high, therefore you need to change the procedures as it may not be working. You need to safeguard all service users within the risk assessment. Okay. And then if we go on, we're still on. I've just put quite a lot of information so that you can you can do that learning outcome with all the information that you've got. You won't well you'll have to do your readings, um, your academic readings to put um references in there, but it should be enough to get you going. Um, risk assessments and care planning, assessing risk assessments for individuals, meeting health and safety needs, acceptable risk, risk benefit analysis. So the risk assessment informs the care plan of the service user. So you do the risk assessment and from the risk assessment, you will plan the needs around the person from what that comes out with. And then you'd revisit the risk assessment, giving it a time scale. So you might decide that you revisit it in four weeks if the risk was really high because something else might have changed. And meeting the health and safety needs of the service user using a protocol to reduce risk. An example, the risk assessment will inform the procedures you follow. That's one. Um, and now we're on to, have you got any questions? Are you okay with that? Oh, no, no, I'm okay with that, yeah. You sure? <laughs> um, and then it goes on to 2.2, which is the other learning outcome, which says analyse the impact of one aspect of health and safety policy on health and social care practice and its customers. So, I've just got Can impact. Say, yeah, yeah, I've got some examples down here. So, um, an example, so you take, take legislation, so say we took the Children Act again, the main purpose of that is keeping children safe. The policy is for safeguarding young people. The policy affects the service because the policy promotes safeguarding. So then it affects it in a positive way because it upholds legislation. However, if you're analysing a policy, you must say it's you. Sorry, if you're analysing a policy, you may say it's good to keep um, children safe, but there can be implications if you fail to keep a young person safe. On the other hand, if you can show a paper trail how you've adhered to policy, it will show that you stuck to legal requirements. So it's making like, it's giving accountability. What it's about is um, so saying that there could be legal implications if you don't stick to the protocol and the policy within practice. So it's the best practice that you're aware of it because you have a legal responsibility to look after service users. And if you don't, you might be accountable for something that's gone wrong, whether it be abuse, whether it be negligence. Do you understand that example? Yeah, I do. Thank you. So that is um, 2.2. And then 2.3 is discuss how dilemmas encountered in relation to implementing systems and policies for health and safety and security may be addressed. So if we just go to beyond here, I've just given like um, sort of examples in bullet points, but obviously I'll go on to discuss them with you. So I've just put um, determine and taking responsibility, balancing risk against benefit, Resistance of service users, carers and other and others, um, being over and under protected of service users, providing adequate resources to meet health and safety needs, identifying health and safety priorities. So in this section, you need to write about how policies may affect compliance of service users. For example, 
um, I've worked with children that are sex offenders in health and social care settings. The child had one-to-one -one support and could only go out the home with staff as it was a safeguarding concern for other children because he had abused other children. Other children were at risk. However, as a normal thing, a child may, because he was, even though he's a sex offender, he's still a child. Therefore, he's a looked after child from the local authority, but he still has the same needs as children do. So he still wanted to go out and be classed as a normal child. However, because under the legislation and the law stopped him from going out, he couldn't go out without staff because other children would have been at risk. So therefore, staff members need to go with him. Although he never did try to go out on his own, on the risk assessment, if he did, he would have been at high risk. So the policies that were put in place would have linked to the procedures. So we had the procedure, if he was to go off on his own, we would have rang the police. We would have wrote down in the logbook exactly what time that he went out. We would have wrote down what clothing he had on, exactly what it looked like, because obviously we'd know what it looked like, but just if the way that he's had his hair because that's informative to the police that's protecting yourself because as a practitioner you have a legal duty to look after the child and if anything did happen you wouldn't be accountable because you ticked all the boxes you followed the protocol so it's about keeping yourself safe and about keeping um your service users safe too do you understand that one yeah i do Oh, Feel free to ask me anything. Don't worry. I know. I'm actually just listening to you and then making a whole load of no notes. So, All um, right, great. Okay. Because I'm, I'm I'm trying to write down as fast as I can what you're saying. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, just tell me. I I do talk really fast, so don't worry. No, no, no. And also, also, um, the recording will go on mood Also, if you know you can, I'm sure you'll be able to pause me or something <laughs> while you're writing yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is 2.4, which says analyze the effects of non-compliance with health and safety legislation in health and social care workplace. It's like what I said is you could be accountable because if there's non-compliance, you should comply with the policies, with the procedures. So you've covered yourself. It doesn't mean that all service users are going to be, but as long as you've documented it, you followed your policies, that will create a safe environment for you because you could potentially be in a breach of the law in terms of abuse or neglect I mean I'm not for one minute saying that like anybody will go out to do those things but that's why it's so important to be aware of the policies because if you're not and you do something wrong then you could be in breach of the law potentially a criminal record and um, because it's um you have um, a duty to keep service users safe um, and there needs to be, if a risk is identified, everybody needs to know the risk. It's up to practitioners to inform other ones. Appropriate steps um, must be followed in your workplace in terms of the policy. Okay. And that's all the learning outcomes, to be honest, that's gone through them all. So um, if you've got any questions, just uh, feel free to ask me any now if you want to go through anything, because there's only you on. Yeah, no, um, it's it's quite an easy one to be honest. Risk assessment is something that I'm very familiar with. Um, All right, okay. If I do have any questions, I'll probably just contact you. What when I'm yeah. doing the course? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And my email's on there as well. You know, if you just want to send me an email or anything, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right fine. then. Thank you. Thanks for attending. Oh, that's okay. Thank you so much for the lesson today. It's Enjoy your weekend. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 bye.